Every Helldiver is a blessing to Super Earth and her glorious way of life, but additional intel is always beneficial to ensure the maximum spread of democracy. Would you like to know more? Good. Well, strap in there, Buttercup. Here's 18 tips and tricks to be better faster at Helldivers 2. Tip number one, always cover the whole map. Every mission has a main objective, but you damn well better not just be beelining towards that main objective and not exploring at all. Each mission has side objectives, some visible on the map when you first drop in, but others that are hidden and you need to find manually. Completing side objectives will give extra rewards at the end of the mission, so you should literally always seek them out, otherwise you're leaving free rewards on the table. Always look for any nearby structure or icon on your map, which could lead you to a secondary objective. For example, destroying a spore tower or eliminating a stalker nest. Also, make it a goal to hit up every red blotch on your radar. These are enemy outposts and spawn locations, which if shut down, will give you additional rewards at the end of the mission. Exploring the entire map will also allow you to find bunkers, some which are opened via having two players touch a button together, and others which can be opened by simply blowing the door. Bunkers can contain currencies and other rewards, so literally always plan to cover the entire map to leave no reward unclaimed. Tip number two, plan a non-terrible route. Because you want to hit up literally every location on the map, you want to plan the best possible route before dropping in, making sure not only to do the main objective, but search for all other hidden objectives as well. Take this map, for example. Some people may want to just drop in here in order to do the side objective they can see, then take the following path to get out. But look how much of the map we're leaving leaving unchecked. Now here's a route with some chest hair. If we drop in here and take the following path, yeah, the mission will take longer, but we'll find more objectives, take out all the nest locations, and get more rewards in general. Always plan a route that lets you hit up every possible objective and uncover the majority of the map. Tip number three, explore, even on defend area missions. Defend area missions are on incredibly small maps and usually only take a few minutes to complete. And while your only real objective is to just kill enemies and not die, don't just sit there in the middle of the map. Reason being, there's usually common samples laying around out there. These are valuable AF, so get out there and make sure you do a full circle of the tiny map and get all of them before going full on defense mode. And with that in mind, tip number four, understand all currencies. Veterans will find common samples and say, hell yeah, while new players will ask, what the fuck? With that in mind, here's your quick currency 101. You've got requisition slips, super credits, medals, common samples, rare samples, and super samples. Requisition slips are your main form of currency and are easily earned by completing mission objectives and from completing major orders, which you should always remember to check. You use recs for many things, but mainly to unlock new stratagems, aka the main way of upping your overall arsenal. Super credits are premium currency, which you can use at the superstore to buy cosmetic armor, or you can use them to unlock the premium warbond battle pass. Although super credits can be bought directly with actual money, you can also find them free in game in vaults or in other rare loot areas. Just one more reason to search 100% of the map every time. Medals are used to buy items and gear in the free battle pass, which contains some awesome stuff, more on that later, and also to buy items in the premium warbond battle pass after you've unlocked it via spending super credits. Medals are earned from completing missions and also operations, aka completing multiple missions grouped together under one collective umbrella. Naturally, the more missions in your operation, the more medals you will earn. Samples are used to upgrade your ship module. And while that sounds cosmetic, it definitely is not. Ship modules are ways to upgrade your arsenal in the field in the form of buffing your stratagems. Better cooldowns, extra uses, and more. These upgrades can be really strong, and the reason why veteran players are so obsessed with making sure they're always collecting samples in the field. And now that you understand that, tip number five, if you die, recollect your dropped samples. When you gather samples in the field and get your b-hole torn open by a bug or a killer robot, you will drop all samples you were carrying at the time. Again, because those are important for buying upgrades, get your ass back there and pick up those dropped samples off your body. If you're having trouble remembering where exactly you died, open up your map, zoom in, and look for a dropped weapon or dropped sample icon. Before we get any further, no matter your thoughts on Valentine's Day, I think we can all agree that some things go better together. Chocolate and peanut butter, Datto and crowded vaults, but most importantly, audiobooks and Raycon everyday earbuds. I've had mine for a few years now. I use them mainly at the end of the day in the kitchen when I'm cooking and listening to true crime audiobooks. Anyone else do that while they cook? or is it just me? Don't answer that. With optimized gel tips for the perfect in-ear fit, these earbuds are so comfortable and watch. 
they stay in your ear. Not only that, they can go the distance. Eight hours of playtime and 32 hours of battery life. Most importantly, you get amazing audio quality at half the price of other premium audio brands. With literally thousands of five-star reviews, you know they get the job done. If you work out, travel, go on walks, whatever, you gotta check these out. Click the link in the video description or go to buyraycon.com fallout to get 15% off your Raycon purchase and free shipping. Again, that is buyraycon.com fallout for 15% 15% off your order and free shipping. Thank you, Raycon. All right, we back. Tip number six, always take note of the shitty effects. Helldivers 2 has active effects, which act as mission modifiers. Effects can change from day to day and from planet to planet. Sometimes they're good, extra XP and requisition gains. That probably won't be around a ton, but damn good. But other modifiers can really hinder your arsenal and the mission in general and should be taken into account before dropping into combat. Tip number seven, call in support stuff right away. Unless you land right into the dead center of a bug nest, the very first thing you should be doing is calling in your support stratagems, tertiary weapon options like the grenade launcher or the machine gun, and backpack options like the supply pack or the guard dog. Take advantage of that initial quiet time to gear the hell up before venturing out. Tip number eight, the breaker is god tier. If you're a new player or you haven't been paying much attention to the standard war bond section, aka the free battle pass, you are effing up. Admittedly, many of the rewards are cosmetic, but there's good stuff in there too namely the SG-225 Breaker Shotgun unlocked on page four. I've dumped a bunch of hours into this game already and the Breaker is a top tier primary for newer players. It's not meant to be used at very long range, although it is shockingly effective at range for a shotgun, but up close it hits enemies really hard and once you unlock it, there's a good chance it'll carry you for quite a while. Tip number nine, be more accurate. There's more to shooting than just pulling the trigger. There's a few things on your crosshair, but the center dot isn't where your bullet will go. That is actually indicated by the circle on your crosshair, meaning if you're turning or moving, the bullets won't go where your center dot is aiming if the circle has yet to catch up. You'll be more accurate when shooting by standing still, or better yet, by crouching. You'll notice the lines on either side of your crosshair tighten up and get closer to the center, indicating a more accurate shot. And on that note, tip number 10, adjust your scope and fire mode. When in the field, you can enter first person mode when aiming by hitting the switch aim mode button in the combat section of your input options. You can also hold down the reload button to bring up additional options for your weapon, which include whether or not to turn your flashlight on or off or leave to turn on automatically, change your fire mode to semi if you wish, or even change the magnification of your weapon scope if it has that option. Even though 99% of the time I don't use the scoped mode of my weapons, some hell divers may prefer it, so know that the option is available to you. Tip number 11, anti-armor is huge. Some enemies in Helldivers 2 can be ripped through with any kind of gunfire. Other, more annoying enemies have natural armor, which will deflect bullets that lack the anti-armor penetration factor. Your weapons will tell you if they have the ability to penetrate light or even medium armor. Heavy or vehicle armored enemies are often a bitch to deal with at higher levels of difficulty. Even though armored enemies can have weak points, which can be damaged with conventional weaponry, it's recommended that your group brings options to penetrate or flat out break armor off of enemies completely. Tip number 12, use the ping system. Especially if you're a solo player or don't have a mic, don't forget that you can ping enemies. Combat zones can descend into chaos really quickly, so ping priority targets right away in order for your homies to get a better idea of what enemies to target first. Tip number 13, stratagems are not the same as revives. Remember that reinforcing, aka bringing your friends back into the fight after they die, isn't the same as an offensive stratagem. If you're new, you might be hesitant to use your stratagems offensively as the game tells you that you have a limited number of them to use. However, these are not tied to your offensive stratagems, which have no limit on how many times they can be used. They only have cooldowns. Again, the number that you're seeing on your stratagem HUD is the limited number of how many times you can revive your dead teammates into the fight. Tip number 14, the timer on the mission does not equal mission failure. While each mission has a lengthy in-game timer, don't make the mistake of assuming that when 
it hits zero, the mission is over and you will fail. You can still complete your mission after the clock hits zero, but your reinforcements remaining number will go down to zero and you'll only be able to call in dead teammates on a timer, making it much harder to complete your mission if a teammate dies after zero. Tip number 15, don't forget to resupply. Ammo management is huge in Helldivers 2 as the game gives you a limited number of magazines for your weapon and punishes those who reload spam. Remember to keep an eye on your resupply timer, which by the way is shared across your team. When the team is low on ammo, call in more and supply up. Don't call it in early if your team is already good to go on ammo or if you find ammo at nearby structures. Tip number 16, best early stratagems. I've mentioned the breaker shotgun as being an awesome pick as an early in-game weapon, but what are the best early in-game stratagem unlocks? I'm gonna go ahead and recommend the following. Eagle strafing run followed by Eagle napalm airstrike for offense. The Eagle Strafing Run is a short burst bullet storm that helps clear a short path in front of you and comes down very quickly with multiple uses. The Napalm Airstrike takes a little bit longer to come in but hits much harder and blankets any area in fire, which is a great way to handle bug breaches. The Expendable Anti-Tank or the Recoilless Rifle are great weapon picks early on for being able to punch through armor very easily. Even though the Recoilless Rifle demo shows two players using the weapon together, that is for the fastest possible reload. New players should take note that you can use this weapon even if you're a solo player. The reload will just take a little bit longer. The grenade launcher is also great for clearing groups of enemies as well as being able to shut down fortified buildings or bug holes at range. Tip number 17, your armor matters. Aside from wanting to look good while spreading democracy, your armor also has stats and modifiers. So far, every helmet and cape that I've seen is identical in terms of benefits given, but your armor pick does matter. You've got light, medium, and heavy armor, even each which have different benefits. Light armor has the weakest amount of protection, but makes you pretty nimble and can easily allow you to outmaneuver annoying enemies like chargers. Heavy armor has the greatest protection available, but lowers your top speed and overall stamina regen, and medium armor is the middle ground between the two. Also take note that different armor has different passive effects, which can give unique benefits in combat. Experiment with different armor and find what works best for you. Tip number 18, use boosters, but don't stack them. Boosters are a big help for your entire team. When you're loading up a mission and picking your stratagems, the final hexagon is reserved for boosters. Boosters can be acquired in the free battle pass for medals and look like this. Each booster gives a unique benefit for the entire team, things like have deeper radar range or even be more resistant to incoming damage. The only thing is these boosters don't stack, meaning your entire team can't equip four vitality boosters and get four times better resistance to damage. Just make sure every teammate has a booster and that they're all different. Finally, spread more democracy by sharing your favorite tips and or tricks with your fellow Helldivers down in the comment section. Thanks very much for watching. Peace.